right from the moment the job numbers daubed on the first plate. 1061. That's the lady's maiden name, believe it or not. She'll be Oriana only when she's wed. The hull planned in prefabricated units, each weighing up to 40 tons. Shipwrights like Abbotson there would call the cranes with his whistle, or once the keel laying flags were away, with choice curses. And they'd haul the units into place like pieces in a giant construction. These welders have, to a large extent, turned riveting into shipbuilding history. Men who've been building ships for generations work metal like those wax models in the test tanks. Work it and then drill it as easily as wood. No, there's nothing ladylike here where brawny men turn blueprints into steel honeycomb where seasoned craftsmen bend metal into sheer beauty. The ship manager constantly keeping a watch on the work. Now the prefabricated parts are hauled out to this giant's playpen round the building slip, where a new generation of monster cranes can pick them up like parts in a do-it-yourself kit. It only takes 300 odd sections to create the complete hull of the ship. It's model making on a truly gigantic scale. Side brackets and protruding frames close in for the welders to join them together. Section by section. And now a 40 foot deck plate swings into position for the automatic fuse arc welders to get busy. turbines. Superheated steam drives them at up to 10,000 revolutions a minute. In all, there are over 26,000 delicate blades of stainless molybdenum steel. One of the two main gear wheels. Weight, just 60 tons. Something curvaceous in this clanging workshop. A raw hint of the loveliness they'll be when the welding's done. Soon, elegant travellers will dine here in the restaurants to be. They'll remember Edek, perhaps, for blood melon served with ginger. While one of the welders remembers the blood blister he got blowing that aluminium superstructure off. One of the twin propeller shafts will be housed here when the bossing has been bored out to drive Oriana at 27 and a half knots. Now this is what will give Oriana point. The stabilizer that controls her rolling. Fins 13 feet long, like this, at either side. And now, remember how they settled the shape of this bulbous bow unit months ago, shaving away at that wax model back in the experiment tank?
That's light aluminium alloy. By using this instead of heavy steel for the superstructure, the designers were able to add an extra passenger deck. Gulliver performed feats like this by hand in Lilliput. That's one of the two tourist-class swimming pools in one great welded unit they're swinging aboard. Quite suddenly, so much is happening. Port propeller, 19 feet diameter, 28 tons of manganese bronze, with a thrust of 160 tons that will churn the blue sea behind her into a river of foam. A sea where aluminium takes over. Above B deck, no more steel is used. Oriana has secondary propeller assemblies as well as her two main ones, so that she can do delicate maneuvers in narrow waters and glide gracefully into any berth. For these, she has steel casings across her line at bow and stern, the equivalent of a built-in tug at either end. That makes her captain the first man who can stand on a liner's bridge and say, full speed, sideways. A load of plumber's pipes goes aboard, the scuppers. Things are getting more nautical now every minute. Winches, bollards, bulkheads, capstans, guffs, and larboard jibu bars. This is the vocabulary of the sea that the promised bride is acquiring so fast. But what miracle speed is this? Everything already so shipshape? One of the decorative architects walks through cabins and alleyways for which he's been responsible. and he walks bang into the joiner's shop. For these are sample cabins built ashore as the shape of things afloat that are still to come. Oriana's wedding preparations take many scrupulous forms. As if those seagull bridesmaids realized the fact, wedding day has really dawned. Christening day it's called, but with ships, wedding and christening are one. The crowds have gathered for the great ceremony. Craftsmen who have brought a dream into exciting life and fashioned the whole spick and span trousseau of this new bride of the sea. Princess Alexandra of Kent has come to ask God to bless Oriana and all who sail in her. A right royal launching. 